Today on Crossing South, we're back in Rosarito, where we will take to the skies, taste the local specialties, and see a place where major Hollywood films have been produced. Coming up next on Crossing South. Rosarito is a beach resort town of about 70,000 people we wanted to come back to because there's a lot of things to do there. There's restaurants, there's festivals, and there's a really nice beach. Now also, there's very little traffic in Rosarito, so it's really easy to get around. Many Americans live here permanently. But if you really want to do reconnaissance, you got to do it from the air. Okay, folks, so we're here with Adrian Gomez. He's a licensed, uh, accredited tour guide here in Rosarito. And he also happens to be the pilot of these ultralights. How long have you been flying, Adrian? Uh, more than 20 years. More than 20 years? Yeah. Huh? Have I you started... flown anything other than these ultralights? Yeah, I started in hang gliders. Hang without, gliders? Without the engine. Oh, okay. And now with the engine. Oh, right. <laughs> so you get a lot of people, uh, you know, paying to go for rides on this? Yes, uh, all the weekends. We, we have this kind of service here in the beach. How, how, if if uh, folk, one of our folks, uh, viewers back home uh, would want to come to Rosarito and hitch a ride with you, how much would that cost? Well, the, the normal price is uh, 35 bucks, but right now we have a special for 30 bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Special. Yeah, it's a beautiful view. <laughs> Are you going to take this young little girl for yeah, a ride? she's going to fly right now. What's your name? Taylor. Taylor? Nice to meet you, Taylor. Where are you from, Taylor? Ohio. Ohio? Ohio. Buckeye, Ohio huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so you see, folks, uh, it's, it's one of the things to do here in Rosarito. After you're done with uh, Taylor, you think you could give me a ride? Uh, why not? Sure. <laughs> I'm afraid of flying, guys, but I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. Okay, they're putting a, a styrofoam helmet on me because, of course, it'll save my life. In the case, in the, in the case we plummet, he's saying it's a psychology helmet. <laughs> Will it really make a difference? <laughs> no. Oh boy. Oh boy. I changed my mind. I don't want to go. Get me off this thing. Now. We're actually doing this. Uh, how would I feel? Uh, nervous? Afraid? I hope you folks appreciate this. <laughs> oh my folks. Hopefully not for the last time. <laughs> okay, accelerate it now. Telling you folks, this truly is a bird's eye view, and no adjective does it justice. The breathtaking scenery along the Rosarito shore is worth every single penny, all 3,000 of them.
you are out there. I mean, no cockpit. It's like flying on a bike. You see the precipice, it's there. The breeze caresses your face and you are blinded by the glistening of the sun as it mirrors back at you from the ocean water. As we made our approach in order to land, I couldn't help noticing people walking on what was essentially our runway. Hope we don't hit anyone. Thank you very much, my friend. <laughs> we lived! We lived! <laughs> okay, so it was both exhilarating, petrifying, and fantastic. Right. All right. Josh. Thank you very okay, much, my friend, for bringing me back home alive. All right? <laughs> this is Crossing South. A few steps away from these ultralights, there was a festival going on, so we decided to check it out. We found in this uh, Rosarito setting today, this beautiful family. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, how you doing? What's your name? Press. Press, and? Justine. Justine. <laughs> and these two beautiful girls, what are your names? Taja. Huh? Taja. Taja. And you? Oh, she's shy. <laughs> she's shy. This is Milan. <laughs> Milan, Milan. Yeah. So, uh, where are you folks from originally? Well, uh, we're from Southern California. We met up in Northern in California in the Bay Area. Uh-huh. Yeah. Are you enjoying the Rosarito sun on this, uh, July 4th weekend? Absolutely, absolutely. Now we've got a house down here, so we uh, spend uh, part of our time here and uh, been living here for the last year. Actually. So you guys cross south, but permanently. You live down here now? Yeah, yeah, this is base camp. What can you tell us about the Rosarito scene? Well, how can the folks back home enjoy this, uh, this beach town? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, it's a gem again. It's kind of what it used to be. And uh, this, this example right here, we've got a, a farmer's market. Um, here we are on the uh, a beachfront right now. We've got some culture and some um, dancing you can see in the background. Yeah, it's amazing. We've got some great surf out here and amazing weather, and um, it's, uh, it's, it's a good quality of life. Are you enjoying being down here? And yeah, we love it. These, they went to school here this year in a bilingual school, and they learn Spanish. You're going to school here in Mexico? Wow. <laughs> so, tu hablas español? Po <laughs> she said poquito with no accent. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can tell. <laughs> well, thank you very much for talking to us. Right and, uh, this is Crossing South, folks. After enjoying the thrills of the skies and talking to nice folks, it was time to find a gold nugget. You know, both locals and tourists know alike that the place to get lobster in Baja is called Puerto Nuevo. We're here right now, and we're gonna get to know one of these places called Villa Ortegas. So come follow us along. It's one of the many things that are available when you come to a nice, beautiful fishing village like this one, a particular one that specializes in lobster. So let's get to know this place a little bit better. Okay, folks, we're here with Mr. Chuy Sevilla. Nice to meet you. He's nice the manager you. manager of uh, Ortegas. Is that Villa, the name? Villa Ortegas. Villa Ortegas restaurant here in uh, Puerto Nuevo. So tell us about the history of Puerto Nuevo. What what can you tell us about uh, this uh, lobster famous place? Well, it was uh, born by the uh, fishermen. Actually, uh, that was it. Every day is a uh, plate for them. They got fed up with the lobster, eating lobster every single day for <laughs> people. 
and they decided to go to the war with it. Uh, we were coming in from the outside, exchanging lobster for um, anything, uh, from eggs to meat. Oh, really? Whatever you have available. What decade was this? Way back in 1950, 19, between 1945 to 1950s plus. That's when people used to come in and <laughs> swap lobster for oh, wow. whatever you have available. So really that's the history of Puerto that Nuevo? Was, people were so poor, they only ate lobster, they were sick of it, so they started to exchange lobster for any other goods they could get. That's how, that's how this uh, <laughs> town, little town began. Well, it's a very interesting town. How many restaurants does Puerto Nuevo now have? Uh, right now we're looking at about probably like 40 plus. 40 lobster restaurants. Yes. We're going to get to taste that today, folks, so stay with us. We hope you enjoy uh, watching us uh, sacrifice ourselves uh, tasting this Puerto Nuevo lobster. Stay with us. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, Mr. Chewy, uh, as beautiful as this place is, with nice mariachi music, very nice atmosphere, it's all about the lobster, isn't it? It's all about the lobster. <laughs> but when, the first thing you get to do is you open your tortillas. Oh, the tortillas? Yeah, they're okay. pretty small. Oh, wow. Tort oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice and hot. <laughs> nice and hot. This is a gigantic tortilla. That's now, right. I, I know I'm not supposed to just put that there. No, you grab, you grab it by the horn. Tell me how. With a fork. Okay. Go like this. Just grab it right there. Go under. And just pull it. So just like that. Turn yeah. it and. Turn it and just keep pulling. And Otherwise, just, you and will fight it to the end. <laughs> oh. Boy. There, yeah, yeah. So this is just the shell, right? That's just the shell. So some people like to chew on that until they get little crepes. Uh huh. But but this is the good stuff. That's the good stuff. Now now, what do I do with this? Tell me. There's two things. Either you can get a piece of tortilla okay, let's and make get, a burrito out of it. Okay, let's get a piece of tortilla. Get the rice and beans and put it on. Put some hot sauce on it and go at it. Okay, so, so you grab the tortilla, you put a piece of lobster there? Yeah. Okay, what, what else do I put on it? Put rice and beans. You put rice and beans. Okay, and what else? A little bit of salsa. A little bit of, which one? Either or. Either or, okay, okay. Put some sauce on it. That's a Mexican salsa. And this and is a, a burrito. This is a, a burrito. lobster burrito. That's lobster burrito. <laughs> you guys ready for that? Okay. You see, I eat a lot on this show, so just so you know. It's alright. <laughs> mm. mm. Thank you. I'm just dripping all over. <laughs> so tender. Yeah. It is very tender. And very tasty. And very tasty. It has a lot of flavor. Mm. That's what they call uh, Baja Lobster. Puerto Nuevo style. Now the next thing you're going to do, what, how you'll make a burrito, you just take a little piece of it okay, and dip see. it on the butter. Okay, so the other part is, I just I just cut a piece. Okay, so you grab it, you dip it in the butter. Okay. You bring it out. Now doesn't that, doesn't that look good? <laughs> okay, let, let, let's try this. Fantastic. Totally different flavor than the first one. Completely different. One of the many things you can do when you cross south. Lobster is the signature dish of Puerto Nuevo, but that's not all you can eat here. Well, folks, continuing here in Puerto Nuevo, we, we have some other side dishes that you can actually order in this region as well. And we're here with Mr. Enrique Murillo, Hi. who is the manager of Puerto Nuevo number two. So that's, that's... Yeah, that's the name of the restaurant where I work. And it's been in the business for almost 56 years. 56 years. Yes. So, Enrique, 
Talk to us about the dishes that we're about to try here that people can order on top of lobster. Right. Now, I see this uh, veggie, uh, you know, hors d'oeuvre. What is it? Tell me what this, this is. This is a dry chili. This has been marinated. Dry chili? Yeah. Uh-huh. We call it uh, chili ancho. Okay. Okay. And they have a piece of cheese inside. A piece of cheese inside. Yeah. Let's try it. Oh wow, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's juicy. What is this little thing? Is this, this like, a, like a sope or what is it? That's what it is, it's a sope with a crab meat inside. Okay. And, and the crab is cooked with a little bit of tomato and onions, but very thin so it didn't mm. show up in the, in the sope. Okay, this is a combination of seafood. Lobster carpaccio. Uh, yes. Okay, let's see. Very few people know that can be made something like that. Mm. Right. This is a chimichanga, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we have a little bit of everything. We have yes. a little bit of healthy stuff. We have some fried stuff, but it's all delicious. Thank you very much. I thank you, Mr. Enrique. I there you have it, folks. Those are some of the uh, side dishes that you can try. When you come into Puerto Nuevo, if you want to expand on your tastings, not just lobster, you also have this, these delicious treats. Rosarito is also home to a very unique place you very likely have already seen before. You know, seeing this location, you might think, did we just shift gears and are now bringing you a show about New York? Well, not so, folks. This only looks like New York, but it's not Hollywood either. So where are we at? We're still in Baja. This is Rosarito. These are the Baja Studios in Rosarito Beach. Uh, many films have been made here, like Titanic, Pearl Harbor, among many others. And it's still for rent uh, for major motion films to bring their productions down here. So let's get to see this place a little bit more as we explore the beaches and the places that Rosarito has to offer. Well, if you saw the Planet of the Apes, you saw this is where they kept the humans, and I am a human, so I think I belong in this cage. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if this is the real thing, but this is a part of the movie where Leo goes, I'm the king of the world! Mm, the livery isn't quite as good, is it? And also the guy's not as handsome as Leo, so this is all you get, folks. <laughs> this is what you get with Crossing South, right? Are these real? This place ain't real. I don't think shells are supposed to be made of cardboard. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time is Master and Commander, The Far Side of the Earth with Russell Crowe. And if you saw that film, you know this, this little raft has a significant role in that film. I even know uh, lines from that part. We call it Le Fish, eh? Now tell me that wasn't fun. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get to see the boat. The actual boat is here, this, the HMS Surprise, or I don't know if it was HMS, but the, uh, the Surprise uh, for uh, Russell, Russell Crowe's ship is in, in the lot, so we'll get to see that as well. Let's go check it out. You know, it's a funny feeling being inside the hull of the Surprise, but let's go, uh, let's go check the uh, upper deck. Let's go up on deck and see if we shall be to quarters. Well, we're on the deck of the Surprise, and she is a beauty. I know that she was built here by uh, local workers under the direction of uh, master shipbuilders from, uh, from all over the place that came down uh, when this movie was made, but they did a fine good job. It, it just looks beautiful. Okay, as much as I like this movie, I'm not really known for my seamanship. I think I just beached uh, this boat because I'm next to a soccer field. Uh, but Mr. Calamy, the lead, if you please. <laughs> Let's go. South, South, West. Originally built for the movie Titanic in 1996 as Fox Studios Baja. The studio is now under new ownership as Baja Studios and is still very active for film productions. 
It's interesting to have such a world-class facility in such a small town. This behind me is the water tank where they shot Titanic and all the aquatic movies that have been uh, filmed in Baja Studios. This is actually the largest water tank in the world for shooting films of this nature. Interesting fact of Baja Studios here in Rosarito. Well, all the experience about the stuff they built here, I mean, the ships, uh, the explosions they've done, it's something you never imagined that could be done in a place like Rosarito. <laughs> Everybody keeps uh, going with the idea that this is strictly a water-related film because of the huge tanks we Having have. the largest water tank in the world for aquatic movies yes. will do that, right? But, yes. but, but we still have uh, dry stages for small productions, commercials, for inserts or anything, or ads. Right, exactly. The people of Baja Studios were kind enough to invite us back to check the lot while an actual film was being shot. So we got to see the World War I period feature film, Little Boy. It was really fun to be around all that film crew and the sets as the movie was being shot. Man, it's a lot of work. According to the production, they shot in 40 different locations across Baja, simulating places like Southeast Asia, the Northwest in the US, Hiroshima in Japan, and many other places. So when this film hits theaters at the end of 2012, know that every single place on screen was shot in Northern Baja. This movie has a cast of accomplished actors like Tom Wilkinson, Emily Watson, Kevin James, Michael Rappaport, just to name a few. So it'll be interesting to see the finished product in theaters. They actually built a 1940s Portland town on the premises that the studios may keep for future productions. Okay, okay, enough of this Hollywood glam. We wanted to now indulge in more vulgar pleasures. So we hit a crusty taco stand, which is very famous here with the locals. Okay, so, so we're gonna have some carne asada right now, some carne asada tacos in a local taco stand that's more famous with the locals than with tourists. So uh, look at that right there. Look at that chunk of meat. That's gonna be inside here right now. Stay with us. <laughs> okay, so we're sitting observing now what is one of the Rosarito delicacies. This is a normal taco. It's filled with meat, it's carne asada. It has, it has all the good stuff, the guacamole, you got the pico de gallo, you got tomato, beans, lettuce, uh, cilantro, onions, and so on. Now this is the Perón, like the big dog. It's basically the same thing, but it also has melted cheese in it. So, this is very famous. This is a very famous uh, type of taco in Rosarito. So I recommend you do ask someone where the Peronis tacos are and you will not forget them. So, uh, if you'll excuse me now. Mm. You know, it's chewy, it's meaty, big chunks of meat in it. Well, you saw it when it was being uh, charbroiled and it was just good. This is just one of the perks of doing a travel show. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 9. 8.5 or 9. Let's do a graphic there. Jorge, Jorge grade, 8.5. Uh, that would be uh, B plus, right? B plus, right? Horseback riding on the beach is one of the many things you can do by crossing south. See you later, folks.
You know, Rosarito is a place that gives you leisure and relaxation in front of the Pacific Ocean, and it's a 30-minute drive from the U.S.-Mexican border. We hope you continue enjoying these places the next time we cross south. You can find maps and information about the places you just saw, or you may order a copy of this program on DVD at CrossingSouth.com.